Hey Greedy 3 Deers, what I want to do in today's episode is just talk you through how I get two pieces of 3D resin print to join together. I'm just going to show you a quick and easy technique so you can do it. Now I've been asked to assemble this new, brand new, you can't buy it anywhere yet, Lara Croft print that a friend of mine has had commissioned at great expense to him. He sent me the faster print and uh, I've done a bit of a test print for him and I've made some suggestions and we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video but but here it is actually printed and of course you can see there's a little bit of uh, sanding still to do on the back but what I want to show you is how I connected these two arms or at least one of the arms I'll show you how I connected it because it's the same process either side and how I've joined the gap that was inherently in the print now the problem we had with this print was in a lot of prints the arm will join the clothing and there'll be such a neat line there that the difference in color will separate the two but on this print unfortunately when it was first commissioned the arm is in two parts, which means two pieces of skin have to be joined together. And that just hasn't, you know, that, that won't work without filling. You'll have a line there and I'll show you how I filled it all. Um, if you do like what you see today, subscribe to the channel. Think about joining our Patreon. Uh, everybody will be welcome there. And if you want to buy anything, buy it from the uh, the item description. And a little bit will kick back to the channel through an affiliate link. And it just helps me continue to do what I, I love to do. So hope you find this useful today. Hope it helps you. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. And uh, enjoy the uh putting together, if you will, of Lara Croft's art. Now, like with any 3D print, we need to do a test fit. And that's what I'm trying here, just to see how it goes. And there's a little bit of work I can do to this to make it fit a little bit better. And there's a couple of divots from the supports on there that I'm going to take off. And for that, I'm just going to use a nail file. And I'm also going to use maybe a little bit of sandpaper just to flatten it off a little bit, get rid of the divots and just make sure that it fits as best as it can. And I'm a little bit happier now that that is fitting better it's not perfect, but it is definitely better. So I'm going to use some super glue. Sparingly, I don't want too much on there so it runs down your model, but just put a little bit of super glue in all the areas. Now, some people use epoxy. I find super glue works just fine for me, and I will use a little bit of activator on it to hold it in place. As I say, if you want to use the five minute epoxy, go ahead and do that. But for me, super glue is grand with a little bit of activator and that will hold it in position absolutely perfectly. Within a couple of seconds, it is absolutely solid. Now, there we go. It's in place, looking good, but I need to get rid of that gap. So what I'm going to be using is this. This is the resin that I made the model with, just in the cap of the bottle, a little bit of a toothpick and a little ultraviolet light that uh, I'll tell you where you can get that from in the item description. And all we're going to do is we're going to fill the gap that you can see there in her arm with the resin that we used to print it in the first place. So I'm going to pop a little bit on my toothpick. I'm going to spread it into the gap and I'm going to seal it. Now, the secret here is not too much. Little layers often is the way to make sure that it's sealed good and properly and hold that light on there for a few seconds until it seals we'll do a little bit more work on that in a bit but again it's just that process of putting the resin on your model to join the gap and to seal it or to cure it rather with your UV light and I'm going to continue around the model putting little bits of the resin on there curing it moving around curing it moving around curing it you get the picture as I say you don't want it too thick you need to make sure that the light can get through the material and I'm using some Sunlu basic grey here but we want to make sure that it gets cured we don't want wet resin on there we don't want resin under the surface that's uncured so little bits often and that's what it looks like at the end you can see it's built up like a scar if you like like a layer around it and what I like to do is just give it a cure under some UV for a couple of minutes just to make sure that I've given it the best cure that I can. Next it's the sanding stage. Now I'm using some 400 grit sandpaper here and I'm just going to really really carefully just go over that arm and sand down the actual raised area the where the two limbs have joined together and that resin has made like a bubble like a scar like a, a surface on the top and I'm using my nail file here just it's it's sometimes you'll get away with a nail file it depends on the angle you're printing at sometimes it's really really hard to get anything in with sandpaper depending on the area that you're using but if you find that you've sanded it and it still looks like there's a little bit of a gap there or a little bit of a and a, a, a part that you don't like maybe or a bit that's still sticking down it's just something else you can do it again 
and again and you can do it as often as you like until you are happy repeat the process cure it and then sand it down to get it as smooth as you can now when you paint this and put uh, some primer on there and you put your final paint on there that will add another layer in there but as you can see the join that gap that was completely visible has now been reduced greatly now you might see a little bit of a line there but I have absolutely no doubt that the paint will cover that and I'm pretty happy with how that is now there looks like there's a line there that isn't actually anything you can feel with your finger I don't think it's a line as such it's just where the two have joined and that new resin has sealed the two together so I'm happy that that is absolutely back to where I want it to be now I've had to do some work on the back here using some wood filler because there was quite a big gap and I still need to add another layer of wood filler and sand it down further but it just shows you what else you can use you can also use some milliput some green stuff well there's lots of things you can use I hope you found that useful today and I hope it's taught you something you maybe didn't know, but you may have known, but you've just seen me do a technique that uh, that works to join two pieces together. Um, what I have done moving forward, I've spoken to him and I've told him my thoughts on how he can make this print a lot better and all those ideas have been taken on board and there is a brand new uh, print of this coming out and uh, what I'm going to be doing is giving this print free to my patrons so uh, if you're one of my patrons uh, you will be getting a copy of this print as soon as the new print files land with me and the new print files are the easy version of printing you don't have to join the arms together uh, you, the, the bow and arrow and everything else is separate as opposed to how it was on this one the string for the bow doesn't go right across the front which is just a, a backwards way of doing it in my opinion so it's all been put right and my patrons will be getting that absolutely free of charge uh, another reason to join the patreon there i would say because i'll do this as often as i can um hope you've enjoyed today and uh, i hope you've learned something i'll see you next time on greedy 3d mm -hmm.